back. So I want to talk to you what happens after 40 with skincare. Here we go. Let's rock and roll. So after 40, our skin stops producing collagen, right? It stops producing collagen. So therefore, that's when we see our texture change. I started seeing my texture change like probably 38-ish, and I'm 40 now because that depletion is starting to happen, right? There is no more baby, like when we look at babies and their cheeks are squishy and it's so beautiful. Uh, yeah, that's not there anymore. <laughs> so there's a few things that we could do, but right now I wanna be able to stick to talk about products and then we can move into treatments with that too. So when 40 comes, we are going to see a change in texture and skin. So ladies, in your mid to late 30s, you'll slowly start seeing changes. And when the collagen leaves, our, our skin starts to atrophy. So things start to fall, gravity. So you start to see hollowness around the eyes. You start to see the nasal labial folds. You see some things occur. I'm going to stick with what we could do just with products and then I'll talk about what we could do as far as home care just with ourselves and then we'll go into treatments. But I wanted to be able to chat about the difference between AHAs and BHAs. So AHAs are alpha hydroxy acids. Now I always tell ladies it might sound scary if you haven't heard of it because it says acid but it's not they are for us and they're good so with alpha hydroxy acids their citric acid is from lemons and oranges can you go out in your refrigerator and open a lemon and an orange and slap it on your face you may that would probably burn but you may and have I done that I have done that before I have done that so this is nice this just helps with Citric acid helps with skin hydration. You're gonna not see it in a lot of products, but I wanted to be able to tell you ladies that it does serve a good purpose, and I wanted to be able to tell you guys what it's from. Moisture evaporation. And gentle reminder, to be able to avoid citric acid in anything less than small amounts because it can cause a flammatory response for the skin so we just want to be able to be very careful with that too so with glycolic acid it is fantastic glycolic acid is derived from sugar cane you're going to see that a lot in cleansers you're going to be able to see that a lot in over-the-counter serums and creams it's something generally out there that works and it works quite quite nice. This is going to help address texture and tone. Is it going to fix it? No. This also just helps assist. Everything that we're saying, if you use a regular pattern, it's going to help. It's going to assist. Um, I tell people, marketing, they're so not nice because they say, well, if you have texture skin, use this and it'll clear. It won't. It won't. If it would, I would tell you, I come bearing good news, but this is good news. The good news is that if we use things, we should be using this. This is nice exfoliant. So glycolic acid is great because it helps grind down the skin. It is effective for the skin. It just, to me, it's like power washing your car or house. I've never done it, but I've had it done to a house and my car, and it just helps wipe everything away just to be able to start new when we do use glycolic acid it's nice because it helps product penetrate do you ever just get dead skin and you look at yourself and you're like oh I look lifeless you just look like there's no life in you that's because dead skin packs up and as we age the cell renewal factor of the flaking slows down so it starts to get almost like glue stuck on our skin to where when we look at ourselves, it looks 
unhealthy. It looks dry. It looks ashy. So we want to be able to use something to be able to help with skin turnover. This glycolic acid is nice to be able to help assist in that. What's the difference be use it between using a scrub and an acid? An acid gets in the skin, ruffles the dead skin cells, and it releases. A scrub uh, or exfoliant that is topically is just buffing the dead skin. They're both good for me acid works better. Do I use both? Of course I use both. But how many times a week do I use it? Three times a week. Three times a week. Just be consistent and I tell people be okay with being a mixologist. To be able to mix things up, try them. There's no rhyme or reason. Look for patterns in your skin and try different things and see how your skin reacts to what you are using. That's the best thing that I could share. The next one is malic acid. It is derived from apples. This is a much gentler alternative to glycolic. Side note, for glycolic, it is stingy, itchy. It isn't the best for all skin types. So to be able to start with something that is over-the-counter, this is when over-the-counter is beneficial. To be able to see if it's irritating for you, and if not, you enjoy it, then to be able to move up to a higher medical grade strength. If you're wondering, well, hey, where can I start as far as glycolic acid or different types of acids? I have a little, like these are just cheapos that I carry and I use. And I have things that are expensive, but we'll get into that. But I just love the ordinary. I love the ordinary brand because it is very inexpensive. Now let me share this to y'all. It's very rare to be able to find a product that's inexpensive, that's an acid, that penetrates and is natural. So I always tell ladies whenever they're on the natural bus, I love it. I love it. I was a vegan for seven years. I'm not anymore. But I use things that were completely natural. And I love that too. There's a place for that too. And if you feel called to do that, then that's perfect. That's perfect. I'm not here to change. I'm just here to be able to encourage, to be able to share information so you can decide. <clears throat> but it's very rare you'll find a completely natural product that has an acid in it because though acid it's derived from all these different places right from milk from apples from uh, sugar cane but it goes through a process the process is a chemical process so you're not going to find something completely utterly natural with acids in it what you are going to find with natural products is bromelain from pineapple. They'll use different things that are sourced that isn't a high grade acid in there. So I just want to be honest and share that with you ladies as well. But if you're looking for certain items, I would suggest the ordinary because they are so gosh darn inexpensive with that too. And so malic is a really nice acid that you can use rather than glycolic because glycolic is can be a little bit harsh still has the same benefits it's really nice as a free radical uh, it's really nice for an antioxidant so is glycolic and it's really nice with brightening and lightening this helps with pigmentation as well is it going to remove pigmentation no is it going to be able to help keep it at bay if you've had treatments with pigmentation if you got lasers done absolutely so this just helps assist, right? Just like a supplement, right? We should all be using certain supplements. And we'll go through that too. Woo -woo. So in the next one in the AHA, which is the alpha hydroxy acids, is lactic acid. It's from what? Sour milk. Mmm, doesn't that sound yummy? It's from sour milk. So it shares a lot of the same benefits as glycolic does, but it's show, it is shown to be treated and used for very effective for pigmentation. So, in doses 
in higher doses, in you can combine like a lactic and glycolic. There are certain ones that they'll combine together forever because they're able to be able to treat a specific skin issue, and that is glycolic and lactic acid. You'll be able to see, but because as well, some ones are less aggressive too. They'll sell them separately, and if you would go in to get an appeal from a medical esthetician or a doctor or whomever, you'll know, oh, I know what they're talking about. I know that lactic acid is from sour milk, malic is apple, glycolic is from sugar cane, and... So let's get into the BHAs, the beta hydroxy acids. So, salicylic is widely used for treating both acne and anti-aging. It has an anti-inflammatory response, which is fantastic, and it just helps prevent comedones. It's very widely used, very much, for acne. It also helps skin with preventing water loss and maintain hydration. You can't use this if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. This is my thing with salicylic. I don't care for it. I don't care for it because to me, and when I've used it on clients, it is so drying, y'all. It is so drying. And one of the things that I've seen time after time after time is when youth or even adults have a breakout. They're like, I just want to be able to throw salicylic on it. I just want to be able to throw sulfur on it and just dry it up. Well, that's all gravy, but if you think about what you're doing, underneath there is bacteria and it's trying to be able to get to the surface. So when you put something on there and there's bacteria underneath, it dries it. So what you're basically doing is baking that area, drying it, and if the closed comedone, the cystic acne, if it isn't completely cleared, you're literally packing it under the skin so it can't get out. Though topically, it looks good, right? Because topically on the skin, we are drying it out so it looks flatter, but then you have the issue whenever it's completely dry, you're putting on makeup and then it's just absorbing because when dry skin you put on makeup it just completely absorbs so it's like what do you do there so i think that for me if you're going to use salicylic it's not an every night thing it's not when you have acne use salicylic use a salicylic cleanser use a salicylic cream that's not really the answer the answer is hard to be digging my ear when i was talking to you guys um i got a little itch but it's to be able to really understand what you're dealing with. So if you're an adult struggling with acne, I do not gravitate towards salicylic. I would rather use glycolic. I would rather use lactic. I would rather use anything else. Yes, even though it's derived from dairy, it doesn't matter. It goes through a process. So it still works really well. Really to clearing off that dead skin, to be able to get dermal planning done going to your medical esthetician, getting dermaplaning done to be able to clean the surface of the skin off so then product can penetrate. When you have acne, you have too much sebaceous um, production of oil that is clogging the skin and then we're using things to dry and then it's packing dead skin when your poor little sebaceous glands are like, I'm just overproducing, help me get it out of the skin. So to Yes, baby just appeared in the video. A little but look, she's looking at herself in the mirror. Look how pretty you are. Just as you are. We're trying out a new haircut. It's called the male haircut. Do y'all like it? <laughs> um, so you can see her up move it a little bit. But does that make sense for y'all when even if it's ladies that are more seasoned like myself, we really don't want to use anything that is drying us out. One, it makes us look old and that's not cool. And then two, it's not helping with the problem. 
So it's being able to use something different. So if you're struggling with active acne, whether you're young or old, yes, use a cleanser with salicylic if you wish, but then use a gentle cleanser, a cream cleanser and alternate day and night. Don't constantly use the same drying. And I don't want to hit like, keep hitting the same thing because I think y'all are receiving what I'm throwing at ya. And then hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is fantastic. And here's my two like disclaimers about that, but I'm gonna do the positive first. It's all positive. But one of the things with hyaluronic acid, it holds a thousand times. It's water, um, weight in water. And it just helps put look at her. Thank you for the kisses so much, baby. Thank you for kisses. This is one thing that I've realized. With the hyaluronic acid, um, just due to its structure, when you put it on, some products you're gonna see, it rolls off when you put makeup on. That's hyaluronic acid. There's really no way getting around that. Try a different product. If you see it in sunscreens, sunscreens will roll. It's not you, it's not your skin. It's just the hyaluronic acid. So. If that's happening, I would try just cutting it with a serum, just add it in two instead of doing it alone. I think that would be really helpful too. Hyaluronic acid, a fun fact, it's a plumber, y'all. Plump it up. So I found if you use hyaluronic acid mixed in with something else, it's so much better because it doesn't peel. I really haven't found too many products that don't peel with it. That it's excellent for all skin types. It's fantastic for gals that are um, acne prone. It's great because it's going to moisturize and hold water in the skin, but it's not going to make you feel greasy at all, at all. So let's go over and rock out the acids and really for which one. If you have dry skin, use lactic acid. Acne prone, you can use zinc. You can use salicylic in moderation. You can use niacinamide. Niacinamide is fantastic if you have acne and for anti-aging. They've done studies which are pretty cool that it has shown that it is more effective than vitamin C. And we're gonna get to talk about vitamin C, but I love it, I love it because it is an anti-ager. It is great, but it also is so effective. I find it more effective than using salicylic. It doesn't dry folks out. I love it. I really am a huge advocate for that too. So dry skin lactic and this is just like bare bone basics we'll get like dig more into it so if you have acneic skin to be able to be able to use salicylic niacinamide right zinc hyaluronic acid is for all skin types all skin types aging skin well lactic and glycolic so if you're aging and drying lactic glycolic and just if you have doll skin in general, all acids. This is the one thing that I'm gonna go against the grain with teaching. These science studies, they're all people's observations. So be willing to try something. Try something new. When you see something on the television or on social media, when it's a hack, Half the people just saw someone else doing it and they tried it. So be willing to go out of the box. When you treat your pretty face, treat your decollete or decolletage, some people say I say decollete, your neck and your chest. And you treat your hands. We treat our hands because, oh thank you, because we drive and when we drive, it gets pummeled with sun. So we want to be able to protect it. And that's where I feel like the cheapies come in. Like with the niacinamide, I do buy niacinamide and hyaluronic acid from Ordinary. I'll put the niacinamide on my hands 
and the hyaluronic acid on my hands. So I think that's a nice little go-to to be able to do. I wanted to be able to now move to another category. New category today, live news with Bethany. So I wanted to just talk about antioxidants because we talked about acids, just basic, just for y'all to be able to have an understanding. And I want to talk about antioxidants. So here we go. Okay. So vitamin C is amazing. It's something that is hydrating. It's brightening. It's anti-aging. It's absolutely just fantastic. But it, you need to be able to have L-absorbic acid in it. Well, because absorbic acid is vitamin C.